just a real little quick bit about installing transmission pieces. You can see here we're checking off each item as we go. And remember how I told you guys, do not trust the microfish as far as the, the uh, exactly how it goes together when we think about beveled ev edges, okay? And if you look at this Kawasaki, you notice here both sides of this are beveled. So we don't have, it looks like it doesn't matter which way it goes. But do you notice how this one has a raised edge? Yes. So that's going to matter. We need to take a look at that. More than likely, that raised edge is going to go against the engine case as a way to space it off and act as a spacer so that you don't have to have the loose washer like we've seen on some of our other transmissions. I don't even, there's no shim on this one. You want to just hand me yours, uh, like off that spring right there? Yeah. So instead of one of these is what I'm saying. It's just basically machined into the gear. But we need to use ServiceMan to verify that. But here's what I'm going to focus on right now is our whole goal is to try and have these stacks built up so that we can assemble it easy. And we try to, once we install the shift drum and forks, we're going to try and uh, put it in neutral. But as we just start to assemble it, we're going down our parts fish here and making sure everything's present but a, a lot of pieces on transmissions can be installed in either direction, just like this other gear. And when I say don't trust just this fish, it doesn't mean that you can't use it. It just means that this is not a final authority on assemblies. That makes sense? But what we're going to really focus on here is this gear right here. Can you see how that's hollowed out on here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's machined out, it has a depth or whatnot. And notice, like I said, the gear fits 100% in either direction. It shoulders and bottoms out right here. So you would be able to put this together. You would be able to assemble this engine. And then when you would go to shift it into this gear set, it would not go all the way. So I'll kind of go sideways here. You can see what's happening. My, my shift fork is going to engage into this gear this gear is actually going to be the the drive gear it's driven by this one the shaft is going to rotate but i got a couple clues here do you notice how i it, it even looks like i have full engagement here how the the tabs are all the way through what we call the ears okay but when i put this on the correct way i get full engagement but now look what happens how much further the gear moves in okay What's happening is we are fully disengaging from this one to engage this. When I flip this around, okay, this will move over, but the shift drum is still trying to rotate and basically it's gonna stop or jam up and it might not disengage on another gear set. What I can see from this is that when I match the parts fish here, I can see that that hollowed side faces this gear set and that's what I'm just getting you guys to build a relationship to, to these photos. Now in the service manual, here's the part that's unfortunate on this one, of all of these pages, of everything on here, we only have one good photo in the book here that shows that gear and it does not show the side of it very clear, does it? No. Okay, so we're gonna dig a little deeper on this and uh, really verify this. When I go this direction, I want you to notice something here. When I'm this direction, do you see how the gear is not able to go inside at all? Yeah. Okay, so when I go, and this this is just showing this on a bench, but when I do it this direction, you can actually see how that gear is in a little bit. Well, the only way to get it in there is to have that reversed around, okay? So a little tip for you on transmissions there. All right, we can go down here can see here we're going to show another example where there's a problem and this isn't every mechanic should know the service manual and parts fish are going to say assemble this transmission and these pieces in this order so we've built this whole shaft up all of these pieces are here here's our shaft and we're down to these last little couple so when I lay these out if I look at this I have a washer I have a gear I have a spacer and I have a washer. I have quantity of four pieces, quantity of four here, and they're all checked off, right? But as I build this shaft up, check this out, okay? So my first washer, you get that 
that how that's sized. Yep. When I just compare these two washers, and as Lexi took this apart, it was like this. It was stacked up on the same one. Okay? Not the way it's supposed to be. Now, then it's supposed to be this bushing, okay? Then this gear, and this gear has to face the right direction, right? Notice it'll fit either way. Just like that other problem we just showed, it'll 100% physically fit either way. You go to shift that transmission for the first time with the case is fully assembled, probably in the engine, it's not gonna shift. You'll see when we put our engines here, we always test them on the bench to make sure. But we'll keep going. We go the right way. Now this is that last washer, the entry level mechanic can really get into trouble here because they think all their pieces are there. This is a precision piece of equipment. Would that ever be correct? No. No, not at all. And you can actually get this to lip. There's a, because there's supposed to be. That bushing's supposed to stick out because the washer we put in here, and when we clamp these cases together, this is not supposed to have any tension on it. The bushing will, but not the gear. Watch what happens when I put this wrong one on the gear hardly wants to move. When I would tighten those cases, this tra this transmission wouldn't even shift. I'll tell you what though, if you start the engine, will that fire up in neutral and drag that right across the bearing on the oh, yeah. case? So perfect example of me being able to identify this without a manual, without just the physical mechanics of this tells me that isn't right. Why don't we use more proof though instead of just being a you know being a, a general mechanic? Can I get the one with the parts numbers? Take a look here. <clears throat> if ever in doubt, part number 29, this washer, and this other washer, 28, they're different part numbers. So I can't have the same size. And when I say same size, I'm gonna take this back apart here. Thank you. When I say same size, we all know as, as technicians, we have three measurements, right? Mm -hmm. Three, not two, three. <laughs> we have an OD, an ID, and then the thickness. So anytime you're comparing washers, we're comparing all of those because these are precision shims that are perfectly ground on both sides. This is not a washer from Bongars, is it? No. Okay. And then I could see here 28 and 29. Guys, they're a different reference number. They're d definitely a different part. We look at 28 and 29, different part numbers. They do not tell us what the size is. You know, you can't get this from anywhere but Suzuki, you know, for the Suzuki model. Don't gamble on it. There's a really good tip on, you know, every mechanic should know. Parts fish, looking at pictures and the way gears go. You can see this one here, just like that other video, how the transmission gear is has no holes in it on that side, but this side I do. I have my matching tabs. That's th this is every mechanic should know. Okay, what you what you should know is I got a problem. Okay, now the thorough technician or the trained technician will go to this stage and go, I need reference number twenty eight. Go here, order it, and get it done. As cheap as these are, and we already know that somebody gambled on on this. You think it'd be a good idea just to order both of them? Yeah. Absolutely. Order both of them. You know, we, we always do new sir clips like we've talked about before. All right, more transmission stuff here. What we're going to notice are our shafts are installed. And if our bearings aren't fully seated in the case, our concern is, is when they're installed like this, can you see how this gear is higher than this one? Yeah. Okay, so if you look here, try and stay out of the camera. If I go across here at the straight edge, boom, I'm hitting that gear, right? But when I have the correct washer in place, we talked about this yesterday, check this out. See how they're nice and equal? Now, if I take that washer off and set on the tallest gear, I can see a gap in here. I could stick filler gauges in there, measure it, and I'll bet you it's gonna be the thickness of that washer. But what we're also seeing here is if these are offset, Let's go to the other engine case. What we would want to check next, my little four inch is on the edge of that bench right there, isn't it? Take one of these six inch rule, rules, cut it down to four inches. This is a favorite of mine, and now I have room to work in here. These bearings are set at the same distance. One's not raised or one's not lowered in proportion to the other. Do you agree? So wouldn't you agree that the shafts over here are going to need to be at the same height? Yes. yes. 
Okay, another little tip for you. All right, we said earlier that we noticed on one of these gears, we have one with a shoulder on it. It was on a different Suzuki that we have, just showed you a few seconds ago in the video, but you know, it, it fits either way, just like that other shaft. And we're trying to decide, do we want the gap between these gears or, did I do that too fast? closer trying to decide if we want the gap between those gears or if we want this raised machined edge to be the shoulder up against the bearing inside the inside the case so we've read this manual back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and the only thing that we could see here the only thing that you could see here in the service manual is you have to look very very close here at this edge right here this represents the bearing these are the two gears together but if you can get down in here can we get any closer and you can actually see let's tip the camera like this hold it right there please a little closer you can see here that there's this lip right here between the bearing and these are flush so that tells us that we need to put it on We need to put it on this way so that that lip is showing and going to be up against the bearing. Hey guys, just thinking about some of the things that we need to just really consider when it comes to transmissions. This just really isn't, in my opinion, even an entry level skill. This is something that needs to be supervised. I would say have a, an apprenticeship or a mentor next to you checking your work. This is just way too easy to make assumptions. And what I really find is that there's just a lot of missing information in the service manual that you really need to know. Uh, many of the tips in this video were just from uh, you know us digging in and collecting the, the common mistakes that we see out in the field and uh, just really throwing them into our curriculum. So really in summary here, what I, what I wanna say is just uh, this is definitely a, a job that uh, can be really enjoyable. It's fun to uh, to work with the mechanics of this. Um, some of us really enjoy it, but this really takes a lot of attention to detail. And if you question, you know what what you're seeing in this video, and you think it's not really that big a deal, or some of the other ones that we've done here, I want you to consider something. I mean, it, I'm not going to pick on a manufacturer or brand right now, but I mean, you can Google, you know, motorcycle transmission recalls, motorcycle transmission failures. And what you're going to find is that there's been some pretty big uh, recalls that have happened on the OEM side where parts went in uh, and, and they didn't work. I'm not even going to claim to say that they were bad or that they were installed wrong or whatever, but we know this. Something went wrong. And when we deal with a constant mesh transmission like we have here and things go wrong, typically that rear wheel will lock up. And that's usually a loss of life and uh, equipment. And it's just bad. I mean, it's there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So I want you to be diligent. I want you to dig in. And I want you to really be sure about what you're doing. And, and myself, or anybody included, have somebody just double check what you're doing uh, just to verify your work. And uh, kind of use that teamwork mentality and the accountability approach. And uh, go do some great work, do some great things, and uh, repair these motorcycles.